Alpadon Podcast. Alpadon Podcast. This is your boy Dapper Don Diz. What's up? It's your boy Dapper Don Diz. You're now tuned in to the Dapper Don Podcast. Well, today we're breaking down Southern hip hop culture and we're breaking down the soldier life mentality. Soldier life mentality, when I think of it, isn't just also, you know, PTSD from those who have served our country, who have, you know, fought for our freedoms. And we definitely appreciate that over here at Dapper Don Podcast. But when I speak on soldier life mentality, it also has another sense to it. Because if we look at our American history, we've launched wars against people in the inner city. Whether that be the war on drugs or the war on poverty or just the war on us. And when you're caught in between this, I think this creates what you call a soldier life mentality. This phrase was really popular, was made popular in New Orleans. See, because in people in New Orleans, if you upheld a certain level of, of bravado, a certain level of strength, you was considered like, oh, that soldier. If you did something, you know, tough or you gained some kind of credibility for something you did, oh, that person's soldier. That person's cool. And this is kind of where we're at with it. Um, But when I'm speaking on social life mentality in this episode, we break down the mentality that affects so many artists and people in general. No one has any clear answer to what caused the soldier life mentality. Is it mental health issues disguised as bravado or clout chasing blaming on your environment? I felt the best two artists to pick was the baby Gucci man. Both artists have been through stints in jail and have had more run-ins with the law than hit records and they have a lot of hit records. So first thing we got to consider is what is the soldier life mentality and how do you know you have it? Well, the soldier life mentality is a lot like thug life, right? I guess that's just a rebranding of the term thug life from Tupac. But this was from Soldier Slim. And his lyrics ring so true when he says, black man kill a black man. It's cool. They loving that. Black man kill a white man. They send it to him to death. White man kill a black man. Break it down to manslaughter after all of the evidence. And the thing about it is, these lyrics wasn't written two weeks ago. This wasn't written two months ago. This wasn't written two years ago. It was written almost two decades ago. And it's still true. It's still the life that we all see happening to too many minorities in America. But with that being said, though, we also have to realize the first part he said, the first lyric, black man kill a black man. It's cool. They're loving it. That's important to say. Because that's kind of the thing that catapulted Gucci man and the baby. That's what made them so soldier, right? Like, uh, I remember Boosie had a line. He said, don't think because he's swole, bruh, that that mean he's soldier. I mean, don't think that he's tough just because of his out outward appearance. We tend to be celebrating things that, that necessarily no other culture would celebrate. You know, no nobody else would look at that. I can't say that for sure because, you know, biker gangs kill and, you know, the Hell Angels are definitely uh, uh, considered heroes in certain niches of mainstream America. But we're just talking about us. We're talking about our culture. We look at the baby and we look at Gucci Man among many others. Their popularity is in the fact that they have actually killed somebody. And when you look at their brand, so much is governed behind that. Once Gucci Man caught that murder, and we're going to get into the whole specifics of that, he gained so much popularity. His next album after that was hard to kill. After, Because if you don't know the situation, so Gucci, man, first let me take it all the way to the back. The Baby, the Baby is a young artist from uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Really before uh, be, before he got uh, famous, I believe he caught like weed charges. He had like a, you know, a couple stints in jail for weed, but that was pretty much all he got involved into. And he really didn't have a criminal record. Gucci Man in 2001 had called a drug charge. I believe it was like selling coke or something like that. Um, we knew Gucci Man was really in the streets. And that's not to say the baby wasn't either, but just saying we knew what Gucci Man history was. But for the most part, they stayed out of trouble. They wasn't jailbirds like that. Now, that doesn't mean that they wasn't doing what they was already doing. That's not what I'm telling you. They might have been even worse before this. But when you look at their... Rap sheet, so much of it comes after. So much of it comes after their arrest. And this leads you to wonder, is it that they've gotten worse before fame? Or has fame introduced mainstream to the mentality, to the soldier life mentality that we all deal with to this day? In, in a, like, let's say, the hood or whatever. Meaning, if 
you still off on a driver or a friend or you fight in a nightclub, no one's going to come arrest you. You fight outside the building and, you know, you fight, you get into a fight in your apartments, nobody calls the cops. This is normal. People screaming and yelling at each other outside, nobody, nobody does anything. And when you bring this mentality into the mainstream, it's a culture shock for them and it's going to be a culture shock for you to see how they react. So, social life mentality, I guess you say hood mentality, thug life, keeping it real, being thorough, whatever you call it. But social life mentality fixed because there's also certain qualities in the men who are really from that cloth. That's what I mean. The ones who are really from that cloth. Social Slim was from that cloth. Uh, the baby's from that cloth. Gucci Man's from that cloth. And I wanted to break down and, and show you some of the things that, some of the PTSD that people suffer. And what is post-traumatic stress and some signs of it. Hit it is. And tell me, does this not remind you of not only these fellas, but also people you know, and even yourself sometimes. Feeling upset by things that remind you of what happened. If you ever notice, we constantly, especially in the hood, like, oh, you ain't playing me like that. You're going to put your hands on me. Or look how far we take a fist fight. But you got to realize you might have suffered post-traumatic stress from watching your mother get beat. So you may view that as the ultimate sign of disrespect. I'm going to keep going. Feeling upset about things that remind you what happened. Having nightmares, vivid memories, or flashbacks of the event that makes you feel like it happened all over again. Getting caught in that loop. Getting caught in that loop. I remember in therapy they told me you have to learn to be able to look into the, in, into the incident. You don't want to be in it like you're reliving it because that's a trigger. And that's not coping with it. I kind of thought you had to live in it to go through it. And I remember, and, and you can feel it, right? Like, let's say you ever been rejected by a girl. You want to walk up, talk to a girl, you get rejected by her. The next girl you walk up to, you start living in the same experience. And because you're living in that same experience, she give you, no, I'm not comparing, you know, uh, uh, life trauma to the trauma of being rejected. But I just want to make it so simple that you can at least understand what the feeling is. Because once you can get the feeling, you can understand everything. The part I want you to understand is the feeling. That feeling you got when you were rejected is the same feeling because you're reliving that pain. You relive that hurt. And that is post-traumatic stress disorder depending on how big. So imagine, now take that same scenario, you get rejected and times that by a thousand when it's you seeing your friend get killed, when you've been abused in your childhood or when you just... And to cope with it, we make it normal. We make it normal because that makes it easy to cope with. I'm going to keep rattling them off. Feeling emotionally cut off from others. That's an easy one. That's an easy one. That one right there, everybody has one point in time where they felt cut off. I remember when uh, when I had got into my, my court trouble, I had got into some legal trouble early on. And before that, I had a nice car. I didn't have a nice car. I was 88 celebrity, but at 18, it was a nice car. I had a job that paid good, almost 10 bucks an hour. That's pretty good for 2007, especially, <laughs> especially how most people didn't have a job in 2007. So in 2007, 2008, so I was doing good. And uh, what else was, I just had a lot of things going good for me. I had my own apartment. It felt good. And when I lost those things due to my negligence, due to my arrogance, due to my decisions, I did feel cut off from others, and I did feel like it's me against the world, my back against the rope. So, and, and an interesting thing I heard somebody say, our choices might lead us to, this, to the trauma, but none of us choose to be traumatized. Our decisions might lead us to the trauma, but none of us choose to be traumatized. Keep that in mind, man. Here, here's another one. Having nightmares, vivid uh, vivid memories or flashbacks of events that make you feel like it happened all over. Okay, I did that. Uh, feeling emotional and cut off from others, for sure. Feeling numb or losing interest in the things you used to care about. It's already tough to keep caring about stuff because, you know, come on, let's be real. We grew up in this internet era. We pick it up and put it down five minutes later. It's tough to stick to anything. But then you add on to the fact of you're dealing with this, this trauma that's weighing heavy on you. It's easy to let it go. It's easy to forget about it. I can't tell you how many times I started and stopped this podcast. And, and this is another one. When you look at Gucci, man, he really felt like a lot of the game had left him behind. And, and the same with the baby. The baby feels like 
you know, not only does he feel cut off from everybody else and like they're just picking on him, he's not really taking accountability of it. But at the same time, you got to realize you get into an altercation because I, I didn't even explain. I didn't even explain what I mean by they both end up. Okay, so the baby end up murdering somebody in Walmart. Gucci man end up murdering somebody in an attempted robbery. Matter of fact, I got it right here. In May 2005, during the height of his beef with Young Jeezy, five men attempted to rob Gucci man due to a song lyric that placed a bounty on the rapper's ice cream chain for $10,000. The men attempted to ambush Gucci. A scuffle transpired in an, an alleged attempt to defend himself. Gucci required, acquired a gun and shot at his assailants, ending the robbery and killing one man. Henry Clark III, better known as Pookie Loke. His body was found three days later at a local high school. Wow. Wow, that's crazy. Like, what was he doing for those three days? That's the, <laughs> that's the drama. Oh, my God. What do you think Gucci Man was? Because he, I can only imagine what you're going through before you say, no, let's just leave him at the middle school. Let, let's just leave him at the middle school. Let some... <laughs> That's some little kid swinging on a swing find this this body. Hopefully he's not related to him. Hopefully, you know, chance is he lived in that area. So they found him. I thought this was in North Carolina too. I didn't even know this was in Decatur. That's the crazy part. Let's leave him at the middle school. What other ideas do you think he came up with before he said, nah, 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 we doing the middle school. We doing the middle school. Maybe a, a butcher. He was like, ah, I'll leave him at a butcher. Maybe they think like, oh, this was just, ew, ew, what if they would have butchered them? Gross and sold it to you. That's gross. Nah, rest in peace, I'm not being funny. This is not something to be funny about. But he did leave them at a middle school. I didn't make that up. I can't take that. <laughs> I can't tell you what makes a man leave you at middle school. All right, so the Cab County put out a warrant. Oh, uh, yeah. For Gucci Man's arrest for first degree murder. You didn't even know that, huh? He turned himself in on May 19th, pleading that. The shots was made in self-defense. The shots was in self-defense. Me dropping off at a middle school was just out of common sense. Because middle school's a, a middle schooler did it. That makes sense. He ended up posting Bond for $100,000 on May 24th, the day he actually dropped his album. And this was an important thing because I remember watching the Joe Button podcast. And I like to listen to them because, or what to him, because he's actually dropped albums. He shows you the other side of it. And he's like, well, they want you free to promote your music. And that makes sense. So they went ahead and posted $100,000. I bet they dropped cash. Said, hey, get him out here. He got to be doing radio. I remember, though, because Waka Flocka's mom managed Gucci Man. That's how I guess that's how him and Waka Flocka met. So uh, his mom managed Gucci Man, and uh, boo, 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 managed Gucci Man. and said nobody wanted to touch him, and she had to leave him out of, take him out of Atlanta, and take him to New York City. That's where he had to push. That's where they pushed him and got his uh, name back in the game. But yeah, so they made Bond 2004, not 2004, May 24th, uh, 2005, and by January 2006, the case was getting his drop due to a lack of evidence. That thing might have been sitting in that middle school for three days. That may be the middle school everybody dumped bodies at. Them poor kids. Everybody dumping bodies in your middle school. That's They got soldier life mentality. They got post-traumatic stress for sure. May not. Kids ain't even out of school yet. Kids ain't even out of school yet. Oh, that's gross. He could have at least held on. I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Pookie Loke family, please don't come and do nothing to me. Anyway, so, yeah. This is how I also feel like he has post-traumatic stress because by July 2005, he got into it with another person. I mean, he was in there May 19th. He got out May 24th, and he ended up assaulting a, a promoter. At the time, let me run it down to you. Gucci Man is arrested in Miami for assault that occurred earlier that month. The altercation involved a club promoter that was visiting Big Cat Records. And we're going to talk about Big Cat Records and uh, Homie Homage Soon enough, uh, after, in the next segment, the promoter claims that the argument ensued between him and Gucci, and then he turned his back and Gucci struck him with a pool stick and continued to strike him, strike him once he had fell to the ground. Gucci man lawyers claim that the rapper had wasn't involved in the uh, reported fight. In October, Gucci pled no contest to the charges. No contest mean uh, you know somebody did it. 
I'm not saying it was me, but somebody did it. No contest to the charges. He was found guilty of aggravated assault and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for the incident and was sentenced to six months in prison. He remained on probation for six and a half years. He also agreed to pay medical bills of $3,000. That must not have been much damage done because $3,000 don't get you a Band-Aid in the hospital. So I don't know what actually happened. He must not even have went to the hospital. They gonna call you. They gonna charge you three thousand dollars to park your car at the hospital. What three thousand dollars gonna pay for? So he was in the jail. I remember they charged me two hundred dollars, the two thousand dollars to get an ointment when my arm broke out for some bug bite. That ain't got nothing to do with this story. I'm just letting you know. I'm, you know, that's our healthcare system. Kudos to all y'all battling COVID nineteen. Was like, bro, get on with it. You talking about a bug bite? You still got your life. People coming at dying every day. So I'm blessed still be healthy, and so is this guy. Cause Gucci man hit you with a pool stick. Gucci man six foot two, two hundred something pounds. That's not a small guy. Anyway, and uh, he was in jail on that assault charge when the murder involving Pookie Loke was dismissed. AKA Henry Clark the third. I like Henry Clark the third. I'm gonna call him Henry Clark. I don't like the name Pookie. Never liked Pookie. I have family named Pookie, you know, who nickname is Pookie. You, matter of fact, how, how old was Henry Clark? I don't know how old he was, but brother, don't, don't. It's a certain age Pookie got to come out your life, dog. Uh, September 2008, he was re arrested for only doing 25 hours out of his 600 for the, uh, for the, the, the assault on the uh, Miami Police, not police officer, Miami uh, promoter. He only did 25 hours. He went back November 2009. He went back. He was served until May 2010. So from November to May. November. This guy loves. This guy loves getting in trouble in November. So November 2010, off duty officer noticed a white Hummer driving reckless down north side. Northside driving reported the vehicle. When officers finally caught up with the vehicle, Gucci man and unnamed man were arguing outside a body shop. The officer attempted to intervene. Gucci ignored them and punched the man he had the dispute with, which eventually led him to pepper spray Gucci. He would be booked under various charges, damage to government property, obstruction, driving without a license, reckless driving, running a red light or stop sign, failure to maintain a lane, driving on the wrong side of the street. The charges were eventually dropped, but still risked violating his probation in the courtroom. A special plea of mental incompetence was filed, claims he was in no state to fight prosecutors. Now, that's interesting. This really plays the social life mentality, right? Because now, this goes back to the, the feeling of something putting you back in that space. Because, mind you, he tussled this guy. We like to think about it when we think about the shooting that involved Gucci, man. We like to think that he just, he, he woke up, everything was fine, and, and like, oh, he just, he, he just went, okay, corral out of nowhere. He had to fight for this gun. He had to fight for his life. He didn't know what the issue was or what it could be. It was an ambush. So you got to think what is going through a man's mind. That's what I mean when I say soldier life mentality, that PTSD. That's, that's a, a, a very aggressive response to an argument about a traffic. That's some road rage for you. But once again, if he was living in the hood, and this is what I mean when I say mental health issues described, disguised as bravado, what if this is something he's really dealing with? Who would ever stop and say, man, Gucci might actually have an issue? And he filed for incompetency. He's actually reaching out for help. And guess what? I've read through this thing before. He doesn't get it. No one gives him any, he doesn't get mental health till he goes to prison. <laughs> well, thanks for waiting too late. I'm, I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to keep reading. Okay, so December 2010, during a police raid, at Waka Flocka's Flame House, who wasn't there, also found Gucci Man, cuffed him, and took him into custody, but he eventually released without charges. Okay. All right. I'm not mad at that. I don't know what Flocka was doing to get raided. But him and Gucci, he was... Oh, man. You know he had to want to fight Waka after that. Like, Waka, you didn't know, so you ain't doing nothing. They just raided your spot for nothing. All right. Well, in January 2011... 
Supreme Court of Georgia's Fulton County ordered Gucci Man to a psychiatric hospital due to mental incompetency filing. Hmm. There it is. Guess I didn't read through it all. The judge ordered that Gucci Man is transported to a psychiatric bed and chemical dependency treatment facilities. He would undergo tests to determine mental health. He was sent to Anchor Hospital on January 13th, a few days after he was released. Gucci would get his infamous ice cream cone face tag. There it is. There it is. There it is right there in front of you. I don't know what makes I don't I don't know what they talked to him about, what they did in there, but they released him. And I feel like now he's the Joker. You know, you took him to Arkham Asylum and he didn't it's funny because his record label is Asylum Records. He was signed to Asylum Records. So clearly we seeing he has some mental health. April 2011, Gucci is arrested while visiting his parole officer incident where he pushed a woman out of a music moving vehicle back in January outside of South DeKalb Mall. Gucci approached the woman in his white Hummer and asked if she wanted breakfast. The woman entered the vehicle, familiar with the rapper with the ice cream cone tattoo on his face. They never made it to breakfast. The woman claimed Gucci Man offered her $150 for sex. When she refused, he forced her out of the moving truck. According to her. According to her. And, you know, you got to understand that. A lot of times when you see brothers dealing with problems that we face from, I guess, all this systemic racism and, and growing up in the hood, black women seem to be on the receiving end of that. They seem to be on the receiving end of a lot of the dumb things we do. And, you know, I'm, I, I can keep going. Gooch Man was sentenced to six months in court after pleading guilty to two counts of battery, two counts of reckless endangerment. March 2000 and... Uh, and September 2012, the woman sued and won her settlement for 58000 58000 This guy's getting off, man. You at least should get a quarter million and you push somebody out of the car. Maybe Gucci ain't got it like we think he do. Atlanta police issued a warrant for Gucci man's arrest that's allegedly attacking a fan who attempted to get a picture with him. You know, he was a soldier, and this was at a Harlem nightclub in March 2013. It wasn't until the very end of March Gucci man... Turned himself in for aggravated assault charges. He was denied bail and appeared back in court on April 10th. September, December, December. He wiles out again. September, it's announced Gucci Man will be charged with firearm possession by a convicted felon. He talked about this in his book saying this was a dark point. It's like, like they had to give him some uh, this, for for the September 2013 incident. He said that they had to give him like some kind of tranquilizer. It's something they give people who are suffering from some kind of drug addiction or, or some some incoherent drug state. But yeah, I mean, he must have been on some of that Wakandan flower. He must have drunk, you know, that Wakandan flower you take before you come to, <laughs> before you become the king of Wakanda. He must have had some of that because they said they had to put him down and tranquilize him like a horse. You know what I mean? He was he was in a whole nother world. So, you know, y'all know how to go. Gucci man go to prison. So the reason I brought all of that up and I read you through all of that is you starting to see after that, there was an unraveling of the man that is Roderick Davis. There was an unraveling of him. And I'm looking at the baby. We see the baby had his incident in Vegas. I'm not going to go through everything with the baby because it's still unfolding and we don't know all the answers. This was 10 years ago, so it's easy to kind of find certain uh, certain facts. People coming out, they're talking. And people are owning up the stuff. Now that lawsuits are settled and, and criminal court cases are closed, people will talk about it. The baby got a lot going on, and we won't know what actually happened in two years from now. But whatever's happening, he's clearly suffering from the same thing. So if we already define what soldier life is, we see the consequences with Gucci being sentenced to three years in prison. And the baby seems to be going down that exact same path. The baby is dealing with the traumas of the death of his father coming at the height of his fame. And it does seem like he, too, is unraveling. And the thing that's crazy is both these men are very intelligent. So it's not a thing of being dumb. It's not a thing of being overtly aggressive. This is a thing about all of us, you know, coming together, recognizing the signs and not just assuming. You know the old saying, check on your strong friend, right? Because your strong friend going through things just like anybody else is going through it. And 
even though our definition of strong is so different in, in uh in our community, but still nonetheless, check on that friend. Give that friend that opportunity. Let them talk. Don't just assume that's them wilding out or that's them drunk or that's them. They might be actually, you know, crying out for help. Gucci Man clearly was, and it was a shame he had to wait to go to prison and sentenced to three years in prison. He ultimately did too, but sentenced to years in prison and and it looks like he's gotten help. It looks like, you know, he's taking care of his body. He's taking care of himself. And I'm watching Kodak Black go through this. I'm watching NBA Young Boy go through this. I'm watching a lot of young brothers be victims of this soldier life mentality. And we got to really, really do better. So that's deep diving and dirty. I gave you a whole lot on that deep diving and dirty, huh? We, we really went in depth, did some research. But, you know, I want to make sure I gave you a full gumbo pot. So we're going to run through our homie homage. Homie homage today, we're going to talk about Big Cat Records. Marlon Rowe, a.k.a. Big Cat. Big Cat Records, this guy, you know how I always love to show you the names behind the names, right? Because we see the little Johns, but we don't see the people behind them. We see, you know, the t Pains, but we don't see the Convict Records and the Acons that put them there. We don't, we don't see the P and Coach K behind our QCs. The Baby Migos, City Girls, Yachty, everybody. Um, We don't see Block Entertainment behind Young Jock and Boys in the Hood and Young Jeezy and Rick Ross. We don't see none of these names. And I want to show you another name. Or, uh, uh, Tony Draper. Or Tony Draper. You know, Swave House of Pine, 8-Ball, MJG, Gilly the Kid. Um, I press them. Hopefully still can hear me. Gilly the Kid, Rick Ross. Well, I want to talk about Big Cat Records. See, Big Cat Records was another one of those independent labels. And this is why those independent labels are great, because they find young talent that I don't think ordinarily would even find a way to break into the industry. So Big Cat, a.k.a. LaFleur Records, is uh, uh, signed Gucci Man, And Gucci Man was his biggest act. He was the biggest act on his record label. It was an independent It was an independent record label. Um, he he definitely inspired not only Gucci Man's rise to fame, but so many artists, so many other artists. Uh, you have Rashida. You may know her from Love and Hip Hop, but she had a record called Bubblegum. Uh, I remember looking at Rashida performing Bubblegum and thinking she looked too old to do that. And this was like 10 years ago. When you think Bubblegum, you think like a little teenage girl. That's what I felt like... She, should have been the one doing the song. But, you know, she, uh, Rashida had Bubblegum. That was fairly successful. There was another guy named Maceo. Maceo, I could not stand Maceo's flow. I promise. He was he was an okay guy. You know, he was really from where he was from. He's actually signed to Free Bands now, or was signed to Free Bands. We got to one day break down how Future is signing some of the craziest names. He signed Maceo. He signed True Life. I mean... I know these names. I know True Life. I know True Life is very talented. I just don't get why he doesn't sign people in the free band's lane. You know, like when you see Drake, Drake signs people who sound like him. Party Next Door sounds like him. Division sounds like him. Uh, I Love McConan had a record that it was different. I don't want to say it sounded like him, but it was different. Going up on a Tuesday, I'm sure he still can pack Tuesdays out like nothing. He's still getting called for Tuesdays on that, going up on a Tuesday. Genius song. Genius song. Great song for day drinking, going up on a Tuesday. Um, but, yeah, OVO, but we're not talking about that. Somebody who does sign people with the right sign is Marlo Rowe. Marlo Rowe, a.k.a. Big Cat. Big Cat getting money. Big Cat definitely introduced us to Gucci Man, and that is homie homage for Big Cat. Big Cat, we salute you, brother. Now we're going to talk about album cover. Pictures worth a thousand words. And this section of pictures worth a thousand words. We talk about OJ the Juice Man and hey, the other side of the trap. Hey, that was his. He was kind of like a high. His, his uh, ad lib was like a high pitched Joel Santana. You know, it's kind of like he reverse chopped and screwed Joel Santana. But his uh, album cover on the other side of the trap. I'm not going to lie to you. The only reason I picked it is because it's the most underwhelming album cover I have ever seen. Um, it doesn't pop out at you. 
It's funny because he has a colorful album, and the, the album is colorful when it comes to sound, but the cover is black and white, and it looks like an Instagram photo. It looks literally like an Instagram photo with like a green screen in the back. It's the city of Atlanta, and it's like him back to back. It's like one is a picture of him with a hoodie on, and back to back is like the negative of that. You know, like you... When they used to get photos developed, you would have negatives. That's what it looked like. It was like face to face. And it, I mean, conceptually, that makes sense. If it's the other side of the trap, this is the other side of me. You know, that everything is flip flop. Everything is so different. Shows the contrast and I guess what he feels like people need to see in the trap. Right? Because at the time when you thought about trap music or when you just thought about, you know, snap music or any of that, you had Young Jock, you had Yin Yang Twins. You had a lot of fun people, and he was a fun guy as well. But I guess he felt like he wanted to take you deeper and really show you what East Side Atlanta was. And that could be another thing. The other side of the trap may mean the other side of the city. Because East Atlanta really didn't have a lot of acts outside of him and Gucci. I really can't think of, because at the time you had d Bankhead. Well, that was Shawty Lowe as well. You had them franchise boys. You had T.I. West Side Atlanta had so many people. Young Jock may be from out east. I say he from out east like this Jacksonville. <laughs> he ain't from out east. Oh, he may be from the east side of Atlanta. But, uh, you know, he told you the other side of the trap. It was a really cheap album cover, man. I want it because it's sad when you see they mixtape cover. So much creativity go into the mixtape cover. Mixtape cover tells the whole story. And w you didn't tell any story. That album, I, if I was looking at that cover, I wouldn't even know what genre of music I was going to be listening to. Horrible album cover. I expect better out of your OJ the Juice Man. Gucci Man, get that man a budget. You hear me? Get that man a budget. He can't do nothing with that album cover you gave him. Uh, no, no, no. So that's my picture's worth a thousand words. That picture left me speechless. Anyway, I thank you for listening to the podcast as always. And, you know, I try to keep it a half an hour for you. I kind of rushed through the last two segments. I, I had so much to talk about. With, and I didn't even touch really the surface of the stuff I wanted to get into in the comparisons and, like, the social life mentality and just how it, it really affects my life and how much I'm dealing with it. And even with, like, the, the death of my uncle this week, my uncle this week, and how I really didn't have enough time to really research stuff that just stood out to me, and it was just something that hit me like while I was staying at his coffin, and I just wanted y'all to see that too. I wanted y'all to you know, share that moment with me. I know a lot of y'all are hurting right now. A lot of people are suffering. A lot of people are, you know, taking to the streets and venting out that anger, and I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it at all. So until next time, it is your boy Dapper Don Dex. Dapper Don Podcast, Dapper Don Podcast, this is your boy Dapper Don Diggs.